Hi everyone and welcome to this lecture. We want to show an example how you can find out branch points and suitable branch cuts for a given multi-valued function. And as you can see that the problem I have already written down is that it wants us to identify the branch points and find suitable branch cuts for a function that is f of z equals to square root over z square plus 1. And now we want to go to the solution. So if you recall your theory lectures, we saw that this square root over z, there it was a z, it was a multi-valued function. And similarly, using that food, using that prob um, example as a leading one, or that is following those footsteps, similarly here we'll be able to find the branch points. So let's see how we can do that. So the first thing is to do is that you want to write your f of z as z squared plus 1, right? But this z squared plus 1 can be factored as z plus i. Is it z plus i? Yeah, z plus i and z minus i. Yeah, so those are the factorization. This is just a simple factorization. And use that into this equation. So you will have square root over z plus i z minus i now what you can do is that you can break them down into individual pieces like this and from here if you just consider the example or that you saw in the theory lectures that square root over z had a branch point at z is equals to zero so you can think of this z plus i itself as a z prime and you can easily see that z is equals to plus i and z is equals to minus i will be a branch point because uh, if you take this function let's say let me just write it down so that you can understand what i'm saying that if you had a function like this z to the power half it had a branch point at z is equals to zero right branch point So similarly, thinking this as some h of z and this is some h prime of z, you can easily identify that z equals to minus i will be a branch point for this function over here and z is equals to plus i will be a branch point for this function. And this h and h prime that is square root over z plus i and square root over z minus i if you multiply them together then we get our function f of z so for f of z we have two branch points over here so for f of z z is equals to i and z is equals to minus i are two branch points and obviously okay uh, okay let's not write the point over here because it might not be visible to you points and obviously the infinities are also branch points so we have identified the branch points and now we want to find a branch cut so what we can do right now is that we can draw our argon diagram or the argon plane so let me just write this as real imaginary and let me draw branch points. So these are our branch points, right? This is i, this is minus i. And remember that to keep the function single valued and preserve the analyticity, we don't want to enclose, that is we don't want to traverse, in, uh, traverse keeping our branch points. That is if you want to take some number over here, let's say let's call this theta 1 let's call this theta 2 and this is your sum set if you want to keep the function single valued you have to remain uh, um, in this plane in such a way that the path you are taking should not enclose any of these two points and let me show show you this thing mathematically not just diagrammatically, uh, diagrammatically, but mathematically. So, 
what we're going to do now is that we're going to write z plus i as r2 e to the power i theta 2 remember this theta is also containing our 2 pi n and all that and z minus i as r1 e to the power i theta 1 and our function was square root over z plus i and z minus i so let me just put these things over here and this will be just square root over r1 and r2 and you will have e to the power i theta 1 plus theta 2 divided by 2 this is the thing that we are having right all right so let's consider a case we and this case cases that we are going to see right now okay just the cases we are going to see right now will actually uh, involve this rotation in the argon plane or the complex plane and first uh, and the thing we ask is that the thing we ask is that how f of g changes when we make one complete circuit around various closed loops in the argon diagram so let me write it down again how f of g changes when we make one complete circuit that is one closed loop in the argon diagram so case number one we will not enclose any of the branch points that is we don't want to enclose so not enclosing any of the branch points this will mean that okay let me just go back to the figure so let's say this is our case one that is denoted with black so this is not enclosing any of the branch points over here so this is case one and you can see that this theta theta one and theta two they will start from if you start from here let's take this point to be a if you make a full circuit around this curve theta one and theta two will be just uh, they will change but ultimately when you close this curve they will return to their original values so after uh, not enclosing any of these branch points will result in after one complete circuit theta 1 will be replaced by just theta 1 itself similarly for theta 2 and f of z will be just f of z right okay so let's consider another case this is our case number 2 let me choose another color to denote this case number two let me choose a green color that we want to enclose z equals to i that is one of the branch points but not z is equals to minus i so graphically what this would mean is that again you can start from here and you want to enclose this i but not this minus i okay the minus is a bit invisible so yeah so this will be something like this okay we are enclosing the i not enclosing the minus i so this is our case 2 so when you do this what will happen is that theta will be theta 1 that is theta 1 will be replaced by theta 1 plus 2 pi but theta 2 will just return to its original value and all of these are coming from the examples that you see in your theory lectures that when the circle that we traversed for square root of a z function that is once we enclose the path when there was the branch point z is equals to zero and then we choose a point that was not a branch point and we encircled it so at that point this thetas changed reached a maximum value and upon closing the loop it returned to its original value so if theta 1 is replaced by theta 1 plus 2 pi and theta 2 is just replaced with theta 2 from this equation you can easily see that this theta 1 is getting replaced by theta 1 plus 2 pi right 
So the whole function will now will pick up a factor e to the power i pi because this 2 and the 2 in the denominator will get cancelled out. And this is just what? Minus 1. So if this is the thing that happens, f of z will be replaced with f of minus z. I'm sorry, not f of minus z, but minus f of z because there is a uh, minus 1 times the whole thing. And let's now consider another case. That is our case 3. That is, we want to enclose only this minus i, but not the plus i. So let me choose another color for that. So this will, again, you can start from here. And this will look something like this, although it's not quite visible. Okay, so this is our case number three. Okay, so what we can do right now is that we can change our paper color so that it, it's more visible. Yeah, so this is our case number three. This is hardly visible. Okay, but let's just take this to be our case number three. So after this case number three, we can see that in case number three, we are enclosing z is equals to minus i, but not z is equals to plus i. And again, because of that, theta 2 will be replaced by theta 2 plus 2 pi, and theta 1 will just return to its original value. As a result, this function again, this theta 2, when it goes to theta 2 plus 2 pi, it will also pick up a factor of e to the power i pi. And this whole thing over here, it will be multiplied with a minus sign. So our function f of z will again go to minus f of z. And the final case is that we want to include both of these branches. So when we include both of these branches, this will mean that a thing, a loop like this. So this is our case four, let's say. That is you are enclosing both of these branch points. So if you do that, then theta 1 will be replaced with theta 1 plus 2 pi. Similarly, theta 2 will be replaced by theta 2 plus 2 pi. And our function that was written as square root over r1, r2, it is power i theta 1 and theta 2 by 2, is if you just plug these two in, you will get the function of f of z that is you'll get this whole thing times e to the power i pi e to the power i pi this is minus one this is minus one they cancel each other out and finally you'll just have f of z so f of z gets replaced by f of z itself so what is the lesson from here the lesson is that f of z changes value around the loops containing either z is equals to i or z is equals to minus i but not both we must therefore choose branch cards that prevents us from making a complete loop around either of the branch points right otherwise we are seeing that that is if you don't enclose any of them or if you enclose both of them only then the function is remaining single valued and analytic but whenever one of the branch points are getting enclosed it's becoming multi-valued so that's why we need to make such branch cards that will prevent us to go around any of the that is just one of them not two of them if you just uh, that will prevent us from uh, making a complete loop around either branch point so one of the suitable choice one choice for branch cut cut is the following so this is our imaginary, this is real, and this is i, this is minus i, and this cut will extend to infinity like this. This is one of the choices, and the other choice is the following. That is if you have this, okay, oh, this is not a bad, oh, this is not a very good uh, position or orientation so let me just go down real 
imaginary and again let me just draw the branch points i and minus i and this is our second choice so this is how uh, uh, we can select uh, our branch cuts by inspecting what is happening to the function and notice that this first choice over here these uh, cuts are not finite because from i and minus i they are both extending to uh, positive and negative infinity so to say respectively and here this branch cut is a finite branch cut so this is how you can uh, work from the scratch and go along to calculate branch cut branch points and so on and you can see how you can take your branch cuts for your convenience this will be it for today and thank you